Hello, my name is Lars Sandergaard. I'm a cardiologist based in Copenhagen, Denmark. I'm here to talk about the new Navitor transcatheter heart valve with an active paravalvular sealing skirt. The NG study is conducted in Europe, Australia, and in the US, and is investigating the efficacy and safety of the Navitor valve. This is the next generation valve, so it means that it's a self-expanding technology with inter and a leaflet position. The novel features include an active sealing skirt in order to mitigate the degree of paravalvular leak. And also the stent has been changed so it got optimal radial force across the valve sizes and also the outflow portion have a more curved design. It's currently in four sizes, 23, 25, 27 and 29 millimeter, covering aortic annulus between 19 and 27 millimeter. Saying that there will be a third valve, the Titan valve, going up to aortic annular size of 30 millimeter. So coming to the 30 days safety outcomes for the first 120 patients included, all patients at high or extreme surgical risk. There was no mortality at 30 days and also the rate of stroke, bleeding, acute kidney injury, vascular complication was very low. There was 15% of the patient who received a new permanent pacemaker and out of those 16 patients, 13 patients had pre-existing conduction abnormality. And this is partly due to adding the new FlexNAP system, which give a more precise implantation of this valve. Moving to the hemodynamics of the Navitor valve, we see that the opening area is very large, 2.0 square centimeter boat at discharge and at 30 days. And also the mean gradient is very low, one digit, eight and seven millimeter mercury at discharge in 30 days. So this give a very low rate of patient prestige mismatch and thereby probably also a better durability of this valve. For the paravalvular leak, 80% of the patient had none or only trace paravalvular leak. And the remaining patient, around 20% of the patient had mild paravalvular leak. So none of the patient had moderate or severe paravalvular leak. TAVI has been starting out addressing patients at a higher age and thereby limited life expectancy. But we all expect based on the evidence that it's going to move to patients at a younger age and with a longer life expectancy. And thereby new issues is becoming even more important such as durability, paravalvular leak, conduction abnormality, and also access to the coronary arteries. And I think what we have seen here from the Navitor valve in combination with the new FlexNAP delivery system this is actually fulfilling some of these criteria. So large opening area and low gradient is going to turn into lower rate of patient prestigious mismatch and thereby probably also better durability. And coming to paravalvular leak, I think this active sealing skirt has really proven to solve the problem with paravalvular leak. So 80% of the patient having none or only trace paravalvular leak and the remaining 20% of the patient having only mild paravalvular leak saying that none of the patients have more than mild paravalvular leak. I think that's top of the class. So I think the Navitor valve in combination with FlexNav is going to address almost all the patients out there in need for a transcatheter aortic valve replacement due to aortic stenosis. The gap with the large anatomy, which was uh, an issue with the valve is going to be closed by adding the Titan valve which is going to, go, to cover aortic annular sizes up to 30 millimeter. So the Navitor valve, which has been examined here, is expected to obtain CMARC and thereby becoming commercial available in Europe during the spring 2021. And also it's going to be part of the Advances study, which is going to explore TAVI using the Navitor valve in patients at low and intermediate risk. So thank you for listening to this short overview of the Navitor valve. I hope you all got a chance to use it in the near future and thereby optimizing the outcome for your patients.